So there's obviously a lot of challenges navigating the music world as an anarchist. What is it like navigating the family world as a radical? I mean, it's funny because like, I never really been around kids, kept the fuck away from anybody who had kids. Like, just don't know shit about kids. I'm learning it all, you know, by fire. But it's interesting, you know, because my wife doesn't identify as an anarchist, but she's really into experiential learning, art-based learning, early childhood psychology, and sort of usage of like non coercive, non-reactionary parenting styles. And it's like crazy to me because I feel like I'm more, um, like I felt like I didn't have enough structure growing up or something. And I feel like I'm like a wild feral animal now who just cannot interface with society at all. And so I'm <laughs> re- like, I don't want, like when I had kids, people were like, oh, anarchist babies. And I was like, yo, th- this ain't, this isn't a Christian household here. You know what I mean? Like we're not raising anarchists, we're raising human beings, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, and so it's really cool. So so it's like, I don't want to like expose them to so much radical shit at a really early age and turn them into fucking, you know, either like a cop or- (laughs) um, That's my fear. You know, or like they do some like macho, bravado insurgent shit at age fucking 12 and then their life is over. You know what I mean? Like, so that's like my primary concern as a parent, like coming into this is like trying to hold that line by like keeping it radical, but trying to be smart about it and not and churn out human beings that can like interface with the world, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, and so like, it's pretty cool. I mean, the way we do it is like me and my wife both drop down to part time to have kids and raise them. So like, you know, I work in the mornings, she works in the afternoons. I watch the kids in the morning or in the afternoon, she watches the kids in the morning. And and like, it was really important to me for like a whatever smashing toxic masculinity, patriarchy perspective. Like my father was never around. Her father was never around. They are, you know, they weren't present. They were mainly just like these workhorses who you know, worked all the time, provided money. And then, you know, and then like one day, you know, yeah, one day my dad is dead and it's like, well, that was your life. (laughs) Mm. And so I wanted to be present and I wanted to have that relationship with my kids. And part of moving to do a land project and not live in the city is like, you know, I want them to grow up looking at birds and plants. Like, I mean, it's fucking crazy. I was walking around with my one and a half year old yesterday and she's still teething and she knows she can go into the pine barren part of our yard and pick wintergreen off the forest floor and chew on it and it will like soothe her gums. I didn't even show her that. Oh my God. She learned that from her brother. Oh my God, you know? that's so cool. And. Yeah, and so it's like, you know, like my son, you know, he, like I, we can't grow sorrel in our yard because anytime it pops up, he just fucking devours it, you know? <laughs> and so it's like, it's like, yeah, so it's fun, you know? It, but it's also like we've sacrificed a lot to do it this way. And so when the pandemic hit, we sort of already had like a pandemic parenting model yeah. that worked. Yeah, pays to grow your own vegetables in that kind of situation. Yeah, totally. 